How's it going, guys? It's your boy, Lieutenant Dan, here with another Falcons film breakdown. Today's breakdown will be of Chris Lindstrom, the Falcons' uh, 14th pick in the first round, uh, right guard out of Boston College. Um, and I, before I really get into the breakdown, I want to say a couple of words about the channel. Uh, number one, thank you to all of the grounders, all the subscribers currently subscribed to the channel. Thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you for making this uh, this channel what it is today. Uh, and I thank you for returning and watching this video. Um, and if you're new to this channel and you haven't watched my videos, or maybe you've watched my videos but haven't subscribed to the channel, thank you for coming back. Thank you for, uh, for coming and taking a look at my video. Um, thank you for uh, taking a look at the stuff that we do on this channel. Um, I know this intro is a little long, and I'm sorry, but I just want to show my appreciation and gratitude to all of you Falcons fans and non-Falcons fans and NFL fans around the world uh, that are checking out these videos. I really appreciate it, and thank you. If you wouldn't mind hitting that uh, subscribe button, hitting the notification bell, hitting that... Uh, that share button out to friends and family hitting that like button and going down into the comment section and telling me what you think of chris lindstrom who should be your starting uh five offensive linemen week one let me know in the comments i would really like to hear it uh in this particular case we're going to be having number 96 harris the nose tackle bounced around from the raiders jets ravens now he's uh with the broncos has made a, a living here as their nose tackle he's been been an incredible hard worker um He's going to go up against Chris Lindstrom here. Mark him out for you right now. It's a little hard to see. Sorry for the graininess. Um, Harris goes after Lindstrom here. We're going to play it full speed twice, then break it down. Uh, but Harris comes straight after Lindstrom here. Uh, Lindstrom's going to get contact, going to push him to the outside, have a little help from Alex Mack, and they're able to get that play out of the way. Um, again, contact, hands in the right place, leverage, doesn't get pushed around. This is against the nose tackle, but that pocket collapsing uh, can happen from players of that heavy type. But let's break it down in a little bit of slower motion and, and stop it a couple of times. I, I will be stopping this video, and like I said, uh, it will be a little bit longer than I usually do. Um, Harris comes up. Arm extension. This is a great angle right here. Boom. Hands straight up into the breastplate here right into the shoulder pads and the breastplate getting your hands right up and underneath in the armpit area you're going to gain control of a defensive lineman when they come that way doesn't matter how strong they are doesn't matter how heavy they are doesn't matter how talented they are if you can get your hands and get your hands first on a guy and put your hands in the right position you're going to hold that guy no matter how many moves he does how many spins he does you control that you control it you can control where he goes alex mack sees that this is happening sees lindstrom's taking on a heavy project comes over and helps out and just clears out the area i think it's important again also to identify and i'm going to say this a couple of times through the film that chris lindstrom was not one of the better pass protectors um, because Boston College was not a passing team. So, typically in Boston College, unfortunately, uh, right now at this particular point, when Lindstrom was playing with them, uh, they just have an inexperienced quarterback. They'd rather run the ball, and they throw to safety nets at tight ends. And Lindstrom wasn't asked to be a pass protector. Um, he was more of a run defender than anything. So that was the only real critique that a lot of teams had about him coming out of college into the NFL draft was that he just wasn't a pass protector. He wasn't known for that. So there was a lot of there was a lot of problem area with Chris Lindstrom, but there was a lot of strength when it came to uh, running the ball and him being very heavy nose. And we're gonna get to that in just a second. So here's our first look of Chris Lindstrom in the run blocking, the strength that is Chris Lindstrom. That this is his uh, this is his pride and joy. This is what he does the best. And he's gonna get better as a pass protector. He is. He's gonna be better um as an all-around offensive lineman but in this particular instance right here and i'll go ahead and highlight chris lindstrom for you it is even though the run didn't necessarily go where he was going you can see that chris lindstrom the run blocker is really scary individual and that's why everybody was very happy with chris lindstrom getting drafted at the 14th pick uh in the first round um and the falcons addressing this particular issue because this guy right here we've had an issue at this position for a long time let's get straight into it chris lindstrom on your screen here he's going to go ahead and jump into the front here combo block get up the hole 
um, and then pancake a guy down on the ground. Even though it didn't go exactly where he was going, Chris Lynchton was able to show us A, he can combo black with uh, whether it's average, above average, or, or super right tackles. Um, he can get skinny into space and attack second level. Um, even though the, the run did not go where it needed to go because the fullback missed his block. But you can you can tell that Chris Lindstrom knows exactly where he needs to be. Again, Chris Lindstrom. Just boom. Combo block with the right tackle. Get into the inside. This is supposed to be where the running back's going. He either has to cut back out to the outside or go up where Chris is 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 it's supplying an open an open lane for him. Um, and then Chris is able to then go trounce a guy and um it, it's just that mentality right there that's going to give him more and more looks. Let's go on to the next bit of film. Now, this is a first look at our week one game. So we had a Hall of Fame game where uh, Lindstrom had a couple of looks. And now we get straight into the first play against Miami week one of the preseason. So week zero out of the way, week one, straight in. Chris Lindstrom on your screen, right guard next to Alex Mack. Let's watch and see what he does on this play. Uh, Lindstrom. Play starts, they send the guy in motion. Lindstrom's going to get a hand on 56, lead him out, and then Edo Smith's going to cut back and step back inside. Um, any running back, I think, this is just my opinion, any running back at this point would have already cut inside, would have already cut that way. Edo Smith was supposed to be going all the way to the outside because this run dictates to come out that way. Lindstrom holding that arm, pulling back inside. 56 doesn't have the leverage, is off balance, and you're able to have a guy like Ito Smith kick back inside and go for a couple of yards, showing the strength of Lindstrom, showing the technical ability of Lindstrom. Let's go on to the next play. So here I want to show you the absolute manpower of Chris Lindstrom. Mark him out here for you right now. Can, can, you, can you correct a mistake and how quickly can you correct that mistake? And in this case, Chris Lindstrom has to correct this mistake here. Uh, Lindstrom's going to get driven backwards. Right at this point, I thought, okay, so he's going to get driven back into Schaub. Well, he's able to anchor his left foot down to a point where he can turn his body over and be able to push the guy out of the way. And this is later reviewed to be a completed pass here. But let's just look at it again, man. It's that strength. It's that absolute cunning of him to be able to cerebrally know, okay, I'm falling back, pull, push, and anchor. It's just beautiful, man. It's beautiful stuff. I love that. Let's just, man, let's just go watch it again. Let's watch it again. Look at this. Look at this. Mm. Mwah. Mwah. Beautiful. Beautiful stuff. Let's go. Let's talk for a moment about Chris Lindstrom being a pulling guard and having athleticism, agility, speed, and recognition as a pulling guard going from right to left and getting from level one defensive linemen to level two safeties and linebackers. And on this particular play right here, highlighting Chris Lindstrom, you can see him coming from that right guard position, pull to the left, clear for blockers, and go up the field and, and block a linebacker and a safety. Here he is right here. He pulls across. Gets that initial block on 54 and then pushes up uh, to help them with a short gain for Devontae Freeman. Let's take a look at it again. And this time we're going to stop it. Uh, number 80 gets in his way and the fullback is able to get an initial block with Mohamed Sanu. But you're going to see him push through that hole and hit with number 30, the, uh, the fullback. And open up a little more space for Freeman to jet forward. It's that kind of agility from right to left that makes him incredibly effective. Now we're going to talk about a part of this entire film breakdown. I don't want to leave you on this particular play, but uh, searching through the rest of the plays, I want to kind of highlight this one and one other play that I saw. If there's any one play that I need Chris Lindstrom to grow mature through the whole season, this play highlights that. And it's Chris Lindstrom at right guard, and he's going to have no blockers in front of him. He's not going to engage with anyone. And obviously his role is to stay where he is just in case there's a blitzing linebacker. But as the play develops, looking over to the right-hand side, the right tackle is struggling with a bull rush and gets stepped on. And so he needs to come over to the right-hand side and push that out. And he does that so late 
that pressure comes his way and and that's where we're going to play this right here pressure comes his way and even the pass goes incomplete because he's not able to help his right tackle again looking at it again that late that late step he, he steps on Simbrilo. he understands he just stepped on Simbrilo, so he is not engaging with his right tackle and because of that almost get gets matt ryan hit and that right there is a learning part of chris lynchstrom where he needs to be putting his feet where some needs to be putting his feet having that coordination having that that level that depth of working together and collabing at a at a high level of competition and not having little mistakes like that where chris lynchstrom steps on some brylo if Lindstrom wasn't so worried about what was in front of him and instead what was worried about what was around him then Lindstrom probably would have never stepped on Sombrilo in the first place and then would have been able to turn over to his right hand side and been able to bunch out the bull rush because nothing was happening to Alex Mack and that's that split second recognition sometimes that we just don't we don't analyze during the regular game because in the regular game it's all about the instant reaction and in this particular instance, Chris Lindstrom steps on Sabrilo, and he probably wouldn't have stepped on Sabrilo had he initial reaction turned to the right hand side because there's nothing going on with Mac. His his first priority, make sure the center's okay. Center's doing nothing. The center is absolutely doing nothing. And on the right hand side, you've got a bull rush coming. He needs to quickly turn over to his right hand side and push that out. He doesn't have to engage fully, but he needs to put a hand out and he needs to at least help push where that's coming from and have that understanding of where his feet are and where he is as a player. Because if not, he's gonna get Matt Ryan hurt because it's, it's not individual players doing everything. It's the unit, five guys working together to get it done. And in this particular case, Sembrilo, who was doing the best he could, gets stepped on by Lindstrom, who's not thinking in the moment, and then turns late and almost gets Matt Ryan hit. Thankfully, they had this uh, this particular angle for the Edo Smith touchdown. I was thankful that they had this, grateful that they had this particular angle. Um, but Chris Lindstrom on the right-hand side of your screen um, this is the Edo Smith touchdown here. Lindstrom's going to engage uh, with the, the defensive end here. They're going to kick one guy out. And then Smith is going to choose to go in between uh, what Wes Swicer and what uh, Chris Lindstrom have put together uh, for a hole and then kick back to the inside. And that's just Lindstrom opening that kind of stuff up is just that's what you want. When you get nitty gritty goal line type stuff, that's exactly what you want. So yeah, that's the uh, that's the film I wanted to show you guys on Chris Lindstrom. Uh, of course, there's the Jags game left, and I didn't really even show you a lot of film from the Redskins game, although we're just kind of running a little too long on this video. Maybe I'll make that into another video. Comment in the comment section if you guys would like me to show you all the blocks and all of the things that Chris Lindstrom did in that game. Um, and if I get... Let's say if I get 100 likes on this video and I get 25 comments uh, from different people, uh, I will do another Chris, Lish Chris Lindstrom video. <laughs> I'll do another Chris Lindstrom video uh, highlighting the entire uh, Jags game as well as the uh, Redskins game. Uh, but that being said, rise up, stay grounded, take it easy. Thank you for coming by and uh, enjoying the film breakdown. If you did, uh, hit that like button. If you didn't, hit that dislike button. If you want to comment in the comments section uh, and push for the new video or just tell me what you thought of uh, Chris Lindstrom in, in this set of breakdowns, um, let me know. And make sure that you also subscribe and hit that notification bell as well as go over and share this content to other Falcons fans on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, wherever Falcons fans may be. Rise up, stay grounded, and take it easy.